Well, hello and welcome. Uh, this is video number three in, a, in an 11 part series on the French Revolution and Napoleon. And in today's video, uh, we're gonna talk about the meeting of the Estates General and how that led to uh, really the beginning of the French Revolution, both in, in, uh, in action and, and symbolically. All right, so first of all, just a little bit on the concept of the Estates General. Uh, even though France was an absolute monarchy, uh, they did have a mechanism in place uh, whereby uh, representatives or delegates representing each of the three estates could get together to discuss an issue and then vote on what they wanted to do with that particular issue. And with uh, King Louis XVI's decision to assess taxes on the second estate, uh, that's what ultimately prompted the calling of this meeting of the Estates General. Now, this was not something that happened very often. Uh, this actually was very rare. Uh, the last time uh, that the Estates General had been called into session had been 175 years before. Uh, so it wasn't unprecedented, uh, but it definitely was a sign of pretty significant and extreme circumstances. Now, just for a date reference, uh, this was called into session on the 5th of May, uh, 1789. And so we'll kind of talk through the timeline of this French Revolution as we go through uh, these videos from, from this point moving forward, because one of the things I want you to uh, get a, a decent feel for is how relatively quickly a, a lot of things happened and a lot of changes were made. Now, again, the issue for calling the Estates General uh, into session was the issue of taxation, uh, whether or not the second estate should pay taxes. Uh, the way decisions were made in an Estates General meeting such as this is uh, the delegates with, of each estate would, would meet separately or privately, uh, they would decide how they wanted to vote on an issue, and, and that would be their vote. Uh, so there would be a total of three votes, uh, the majority rules, so a vote for the first, from the first estate, a vote from the second estate, a vote from the third estate. Now, one of the realities of this situation, or this, this, uh, the way this was set up, is that the third estate was probably always uh, going to be on the outside looking in on whatever the issue was. Uh, because more likely than not, the first and second estates would see issues pretty similarly. And if they cast their votes the same way, uh, they, they would always get things to be their way. Uh, so one of the things that, that really begins the move towards a, a revolutionary mood was the reality that the third estate uh, didn't really have a real opportunity uh, to have their voice lead to um, what they wanted. And so one of the things that came up uh, fairly early on in the process of this meeting of the Estates General was uh, the suggestion that uh, the voting process be changed. Uh, basically, what was uh, proposed out of the third estate was that all of the delegates representing all of the all three estates meet together and that each delegate uh, would get to cast a vote. And then they would total up the number of votes uh, from all of the delegates to determine what they did. Now, this would have given a clear advantage to the third estate because over half of the total delegates present at this estate's general meeting represented the third estate. Uh, so to a certain degree, if, I think if you're looking at this objectively, what the, the third estate was proposing would have effectively been just flipping around uh, the way the voting had worked before, where basically the third estate would be guaranteed to get what they wanted, and the first and second estates, if they viewed things differently, wouldn't have a chance. Uh, now, the king had the authority to either approve this change or not, and the king said no. And it was really from this uh, that that steps start to be taken uh, to to have revolution effectively begin. In fact, the the person pictured in the in the screen there was a, a clergyman uh, named uh, Emmanuel Joseph Sayez, and and he suggested that uh, the third estate, being representative of the vast majority of people in France, uh, should actually form what he called the National Assembly, and what they started uh, calling the National Assembly and just start making reforms and changes for France, uh, basically following the logic that if you represent the vast majority of everybody, uh, that, that you know, how, how can you really be stopped? And, and so by kind of adopting this idea of, of becoming the National Assembly, that's really the first act of revolution. And for a timeline uh, reference, that was on June 17th, uh, 1789. So a little over a month into the process of the Estates General meeting, uh, we see the formation of the National Assembly. Now, what practically changed at that moment, um, you know, maybe it was just an idea, maybe something really did change, probably a, a matter of opinion on that. Uh, but at least on paper, 
uh, at least in sentiment, uh, marked the end of absolute monarchy and the start of some version or some form of representative government. Now, as this happened, uh, I think it's safe to say that the king and the first and second estate delegates weren't quite sure what to make of this. Uh, but one thing that, that would happen uh, pretty quickly is uh, as, as this National Assembly formed is uh, first and second state delegates would try to uh, work with them. I think they recognized uh, that, uh, that if they wanted anything to go their way, uh, they needed to not um, you know, shy away from at least trying to be a part of what was going on. Um, despite that, uh, efforts were made to try to make it hard for the National Assembly, this new National Assembly, to be able to operate. Uh, the meeting room that they had met in, uh, they, they came to find was locked. I don't know if the king uh, really thought if he just locked the door, uh, that when they showed up, they'd go, man, we had a good thing going uh, for a couple days, but I guess it's over. Uh, as it turns out, uh, they just found an alternate location to meet. It was actually a, a handball or a tennis court facility. and. Within that, they met and basically agreed, uh, they being these new National Assembly people, they agreed that they would stick together until a new constitution was formed for France. Now, this was uh, a few days after the National Assembly formed and named. Uh, so June 20, 1789, uh, this tennis court oath is taken. And again, just an agreement by these uh, former third estate delegates now calling themselves a National Assembly to, to stick together until a new constitution, a new government in France was officially formed. And so they began uh, work uh, really from that point moving forward. And, and as I said before, first and second estate get delegates did join uh, these, these National Assembly people to, to try to talk through things and be a part of the process, um, despite the fact that I think considering everything, uh, things were going pretty well. Uh, there was still a security uh, that was brought in uh, to be present uh, around uh, where these people were meeting. And unfortunately, uh, that led to uh, a, a growth in, in fear and concern uh, that the king was assembling soldiers to, to take these people down. And ultimately, that led uh, to uh, the belief that, that uh, military force was going to be used and, and people kind of freaked out, I guess is one way of putting it. And, and they began to try to gather weapons uh, to be able to defend themselves against what they thought was an imminent attack on them. Now, the place they ended up going uh, ends up becoming significant in this process of the French Revolution. Uh, it was a building uh, that was actually a prison. It was called the Bastille. And one of the things that they knew uh, were within this facility uh, were weapons and gunpowder. And so basically a, a mob of people just formed and, and broke into the building and took it over and, and gathered the resources there. And, and in a lot of ways, this marked the symbolic beginning of the French Revolution. Uh, in, in a way, almost kind of like this point of no return. It was kind of one thing with the National Assembly forming and, and beginning to talk about making changes in France, uh, but with this added violence and the chaos that came after it, uh, there, there was really no turning back at this point. Now, the Bastille was stormed on July 14th, 1789. And when you look at France today, that that's, you know, and, and talking about that being the symbolic beginning of the French Revolution, it is still a date that is recognized today, uh, Bastille Day. And in a lot of ways, it's kind of like um, our 4th of July, our Independence Day in America. Uh, didn't necessarily mark that things had, had changed in a specific way, but clearly things had changed. All right, so that's uh, where we're going to leave things uh, for today's video. Um, I hope you found it helpful and informative uh, to know a little more about how this revolution really got moving. And with the next video, we'll, we'll start talking about uh, the reforms that this National Assembly attempts to make uh, to try to make for a better France. Uh, so hopefully you'll join me for that video. Thanks for watching.